This is a quick video to show you how to use Illustrator to design your name tag. And if you don't have Illustrator and you want to use a, a word program or InDesign or anything that has the ability to do some text editing, you're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, but Illustrator is pretty direct and easy. So I'll go File and say New. And choices come up on page size. I'll leave it at 8.5. And, and I do want inches to be my... Um, measurements so I can kind of have a good idea what sizes these are and for now just ignore the rest of this stuff but create a new page and I'll come up and use the text tool in Illustrator you have to touch a tool to do anything and so and release it to, to touch the next tool so the text tool is over here and I'm going to grab it and I'm going to just click on the page and it gives me some sample text so let's type in a name and I can use that cursor to highlight it and now go to my character attributes to change it. If these aren't showing, you can go up into the window and make sure that they're checked to um, show fonts and characters and, and any of these others that you can just leave on your screen here. So my character attributes are right here. I can click this down arrow and pick whatever I want in terms of the font. And for your name tags, you're going to want to have something pretty bold and and beefy because you'll probably be applicating these. So let's choose this marker felt. And I'll go ahead and, and pick a really big size on it. So that should work. If you want to resize it, you can go to the black arrow up here and grab a corner. And to constrain the proportions, you want to hold your shift key down while you drag. So let's call that good. So from here, you can kind of start playing with things. But what I want to do first is I want to swap the fill and the stroke attributes so I get just an outline. If you're going to be going on to use this with the embroidery machines or the um, laser cutters, you'll need just the outline for it. So I'll click this little arrow here to swap them. And that gives me just the outline. Now, whenever you use um, text, the, the letters are grouped and they are kind of locked into a format for fonts so what you'll want to do is right click while you have that selected and say create outlines and that takes it out of the mode where it's an actual font but before you do that if it's a font you really like you might want to make a note <clears throat> or make a copy of it because as soon as you click it to outlines, it you can no longer tell what kind of font it is. So now it's turned it into just a basic shape. And so if you want to go back and try to figure that out, sometimes it can be a little tricky. But I'll also go ahead and right click and say ungroup. And now I can actually choose any of these. Like this letter is still grouped with the pieces inside of it. But I'm going to leave it that way. And I'll click it and I'll hit my shift and arrow key maybe to just snug these up a little bit shift arrow and hitting the shift key keeps it constrained to the same horizontal line or vertical line so I'm happy with that and I'll go up to this shape builder here this shape tool and there's a little I hope you can see it a little arrow down below that this and if you click that it pulls out all the tools in that icon and so I'll pick my rectangle tool or you could do rounded rectangle what why don't we do that and I'll come over and I will um, left click to start it and drag that rectangle and then let go and it will complete that rectangle. So that might be my stitch line. And you can certainly leave those corners square if you want. If you want to give yourself a cutting line, you can go to object with it selected, go down to path, and then there's this offset path option. And I've got mine already set at 0.25. And so you can choose what kind of corners that you want on it. And I'll just say, OK. And that would give me my cutting line where this is going to be my sewing line. So let me go ahead and just um, I'll change the stroke on that to look like it has been stitched by adding a dash line. This would not be useful if you're laser cutting, but just just to uh, kind of show you how you can do that, how easy that is. So this is great. If I don't have a good sense for what scale this is, which tends to be my problem because I work on really big screens, you can go down here in the corner. Let me see if I can scoot this over a little bit. And it says that I'm viewing this at 
And so if I click this arrow, I can actually view it at 100%. And that's probably a pretty big name tag. Maybe I'd like to just take the outer part in a little bit. And then maybe reduce the whole thing. So I'm marking or selecting everything and holding the shift key down to constrain proportions. I'll make it a little bit smaller. That's probably a, a better scale for a name tag. So that would be basically my finished name tag. Um, <clears throat> to get your patterns, you can actually select everything and then hold your shift key down and click on these to deselect them. So now I've only got the text and I'm going to hit Control C or Command C on a Mac and Control F or Command F on a PC to make a copy and paste it directly in front. And then I'm going to just hold my arrow and my shift key down to bring that copy down lower. <clears throat> so this will be great for you to use as a pattern. Um, you could use it directly for the laser cutter with some changes to it. But if you're using a fusible and working on the, the back side of the fusible, you'll need to reverse this. And that's super easy to do. So with it selected, I'll right click and go to transform. And I'll say reflect. And a dialog box will come up and I want to keep it on vertical and just say OK. And so that has now given me a pattern that I can tape or glue to the back of my fusible to, to use as my cutting pattern. So from here, I'll do another little video that kind of shows you the next steps.